Hello everybody and welcome to the sixth of CSW Group series of short webinars, My Choices. Uh, so this is a programme that we're offering all week this week and each session will focus on a different area of career development or employability. So today we will be listening to our career development consultant Karen Crosby and she will be talking about social media how to stay safe online and use it to your advantage. Um, as always, um, we welcome uh, interactive feedback in the session. So if you have a question or a comment, please pop it in the Q&A box and we'll very happily deal with that at the end of the session. So without further ado, I will hand you over to Karen. Thank you, Ollie. So as Ollie said, today that we're going to briefly cover how to stay safe online social media, how it might bite you and harm your career if you do not use it with care and how to use social media to your advantage. So social media networking can be a valuable asset to both professional and private life. But remember, it's searchable. Anyone, anytime, anywhere can find it and it's forever. Anyone, even your parents, your school, teachers, tutors, or your future boss can find information you've put on the internet today, tomorrow, or 30 years from now. And it's copyable. Once somebody finds information, they can copy, share, and change it. And it has a global invisible audience. Even if your page is private, you can't tell which friend shares your pages and you have no control over what friends do with the information once you've posted it online. So does anybody know what these celebrities all have in common? Well, they've all made mistakes on social media which has or has potentially harmed their careers, such as in the top left, Jack Maynard, who was kicked out of I'm a Celebrity in 2017 for tweets he made back in 2011. And just below him is a Belgian model, Axel, who lost a lucrative modelling contract with L'Oreal for this tweet about hunting. And more recently, in the bottom right, Aunt Middleton, whose comments about COVID were deemed to be inappropriate and potentially harmful and he was forced to issue an attraction and apology statement. So your online reputation or digital footprint is both real and valuable and your Facebook or Twitter page is your digital CV and it's valuable to your reputation and future career. The best advice is to think before you post and protect yourself by becoming an expert in privacy settings. Think, if you wouldn't want your parents, tutors or an employer to see it, don't post or share it. But did you know that potential employers may view your social media platforms? The ones where you post pictures of your latest holidays or days out with friends, what you've had for lunch and where you tag your friends in funny jokes and memes. But why, you might wonder, would a potential employer be interested in viewing things like that? Well, as it turns out, those posts are precisely why a potential employer may look at your social media account. It can help them to get a more accurate idea about who you are outside of your CV, a personal view into your life. A CV can tell an employer your qualifications, but your social media profiles can help them determine your personality type and if you would be a good fit for their company culture and as a representative of their business. Employers are looking for red flags, risque photos, bad language, anything that would show them that you would be a less than ideal employee to have in their business. But when using social media and the internet, as well as portraying yourself in the best possible way, the main thing is to remember to stay safe online. So I'm going to show a short video about keeping yourself safe on the internet. The internet is an amazing tool that allows you access to countless sources of information and help. When used properly, it can be your best friend, 
However, there are many dangers if you misuse the internet. Here are a few rules that will protect you from those dangers if you follow them. First, it is so important that you don't give your personal information away to anyone, no matter how nice they are or how innocent it may seem. Don't do it. Also, make sure that you don't tell anyone your password except your parents. There are people out there who want to steal your information. Following these simple rules will make sure that they can't do that. Second, don't let your time on the internet get in the way of your other activities. Go spend time with friends and family, play outside, ride a bike, get involved with your community. Once again, the internet can be a great tool, but it is easy to become addicted. Third, never, ever, ever, ever meet up with an internet friend in person. If someone tries to arrange to meet with you, let your parents know right away. You never know who is really on the other side of the screen. Fourth, tell your parents right away if you see anything that makes you feel uncomfortable, no matter what it is. With that being said, stay away from every website that says 18 years or older. Don't click on it. Don't stay on the page. Get out quick. Fifth, cyberbullying will not be tolerated. There is never a reason to tease or hurt anyone else. If you are a victim of cyberbullying, then let your parents or administrator know right away. If you are the one doing the bullying, stop. There will be severe consequences for anyone found cyberbullying, and we know who you are. Sixth, only download pictures or files with your parents' permission. You never know when something you are downloading will have viruses or other harmful things. Seventh, don't send or post pictures of you or your family. Keep your information private. Eighth, follow these rules everywhere you go, whether that is a friend's house, the library, your own home, or outer space. These rules can keep you safe wherever you are. And remember, nothing online is private. Be open with your administrators or parents and make sure they are able to read your emails and check the sites you're visiting. This will protect you and your family and friends. Follow all of these rules and the internet will become the best tool you can have with so many cool ways to learn and excel in your schoolwork. Break these rules and you could end up paying the consequences. So remember, when using the internet or social media, to keep yourself safe and show yourself in the best possible light to follow the do's and don'ts. Do think carefully about how you represent yourself when you're choosing a profile image and also think about the language you use. What you say and do will lay down your digital footprint. Do know who can access your personal information. Assume that everything is public unless you're sure that it isn't. And do trust your instincts. If something doesn't look or feel right, it probably isn't. If you find something online that you don't like or it makes you feel uncomfortable, turn off the computer and tell an adult. And do be careful with your personal information. As soon as it goes online, you have lost control over who will see it and how it can be used. So don't post any pictures that you wouldn't want everyone you know to see, and that includes your parents, teachers and future employers. And don't forget that pictures can easily be copied and shared. And once you've put them on the internet, they're there forever. And do be careful with the personal information of others. Don't photo tag them without their permission or share their personal details or information. They have a right to privacy and you have a responsibility to protect it. Don't assume that everyone you meet online is who they appear to be. Anyone can create a user profile pretending to be anyone else of any age. Just because somebody says they go to school with your cousin or the same college, it doesn't mean that they do. Don't post information that could be used to find you offline without meaning to. Be careful of posting photos with things like car registration plates or identifiable landmarks in them. Don't tag yourself in locations or put post that you are walking home from school via the usual route past a certain shop. And don't reply to messages that harass you or make you feel uncomfortable. Even though you may really want to, this is exactly what cyber bullies want. They want to know that they've got to you, that you're worried and that you're upset. So if a potential employer was looking at your social media profile, what might they be looking for? Well, if you have a Facebook account, they will want to see how you describe yourself 
in your About Me section, and if it matches with how you've described yourself in your cover letter, CV and application form. So always check the spelling and grammar you use and use respectful language. They may look at your photos. They may check that your photos represent you in a professional way. And if you have a Twitter account, a potential employer may like to see if you follow content related to the industry you're interested in. They may check to see if you share useful information relevant to the industry or if you're just using tweets to pick fights with others. So if you're applying for a job, take a look at your tweeting history and your posts and consider deleting anything that won't show you at your best to a potential employer. And again, with an Instagram account, a potential employer may check out the kind of followers you attract. They want to see what you say to them, as this can give them an insight into your personal relationships and if you would be a good cultural fit for the company and representative of their business. And again, they may look at your photos to see if you represent yourself in a dignified way or do you post things that others may consider inappropriate. So remember, when using social media, don't share your password with anyone. Only accept friends requests from people you really know and you've actually met. And don't post anything that you wouldn't want your parents, teachers or a future employer to see. And be authentic. The real you is better than anything you might pretend to be. And learning about privacy settings and reviewing them often is the best way to keep yourself safe online. So now that we've talked about staying safe online and what a future employer may look for, did you know that you can use social media to look for jobs? It's thought that 89% of companies will use social media for recruiting this year and that 56% of human resource professionals use re social networking websites to source potential candidates. And it's thought that over 14 million people used social media last year to find a new job. So social media sites can instantly connect you to people in your networks, which can help when you're searching for jobs. These sites can help form an initial contact with potential employers and by liking or following their profiles, you may get news of upcoming job fairs, job vacancies or work experience opportunities. And it also helps you to learn more about the companies you're interested in working for, how they interact with other companies, how they interact with the public and with their own staff. So if you have a Facebook account, join industry related groups, like and share relevant posts and make sure that you're posting content you're going to be proud of in the next few years. If you have a Twitter account, remember that the brands and people you engage with may impact a potential employer's perception of you and affect whether they believe you're a worthy fit for their company and you would be a good representative of their business. So follow companies that you're interested in, like and retweet relevant posts and try using hashtags and keywords in your own tweets and posts. And this will show that you're interested and enthusiastic in that particular field. So some of you may not have heard of LinkedIn. This is a social networking site for professionals and it's a great professional platform to use and it can be a useful tool when searching for and applying for jobs. It's thought that up to 87% of recruiters use LinkedIn as part of their candidate search. So if you're looking for employment, consider setting up a LinkedIn profile. But remember that when you do, to include a professional looking profile photograph and make sure that all components of your profile are up to date and that you review them and update them often. Make sure that you pay particular attention to the experience, skills and endorsements section. Employers will look at this and you can add up to 50 skills and consider phrases which might be used to search for your skill set. And if you speak another language, make sure that you add it. Employers will like to see if you've connected with businesses in the industry that you're interested in. 
Do you share useful articles? Do you connect with other industry related professionals? Make sure that the location section on your profile is the location which you're searching for a vacancy in and make sure that you regularly check your inbox in case an employer has tried to contact you. So social media has made it easier to reach out and forge new connections with many different employers and professionals. But always remember to double check your privacy settings and review them often. Make sure that you're aware of what's being displayed and to whom, and think about modifying your profile so that potential employers can't see your personal photos, tweets and posts. Look at your profiles and edit the past. Clean up any tweets, shares or posts which could be misinterpreted or not show you at your best light. And remember that embarrassing photos and negative comments could harm your job search or future career. Follow companies or industries that you're interested in. Like, share, retweet relevant posts. Try starting a meaningful discussion and participate in online forums. But always practice discretion and remain professional and use professional language. You can also talk to your family and friends who work in the industries that you're interested in. Ask if they can recommend you to their own employers or let you know if there are any vacancies, volunteering or work experience opportunities. And be professional and consistent. Think about your profile image. Use your real name. As tempting as it is to use a punchy nickname, show a consistent professional approach. This will make it easier for potential employers to find and connect with you. Show your personality. Employers want to get a good idea of who you are, but remember, don't be inappropriate. Don't put too much personal information on your profile. Always check spelling and grammar on posts and always use respectful language. Try to maintain a positive attitude. Don't say negative things about a previous school, college, employer or work experience placement. And think before you click. Think, will this show me in a good way? And am I happy for my parents, teachers or a potential employer to see it? And if not, don't share it. And most importantly, show your strengths. If you're interested in a particular field and you're looking for vacancies in that area, for example, arts, graphics, web design, show your work. Take photographs of your work and post them on your social media profile. If you're interested in mechanics, for example, or hair and beauty, again, take photographs of your work. Consider writing a blog or a how-to video and share it on your profiles so that a potential employer can show that you have an interest and a passion for their industry. So now we've talked about a potential employer may view your social media profile. If you checked your profiles, would you be happy for an employer to look at them? And tomorrow, there's a further webinar on how becoming a volunteer can benefit you in both your private and professional life. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Karen. So um, we hope that all of you listening enjoyed that webinar. Um, please do um, register for any of our remaining sessions this week if you're able to. Um, they're all online at two o'clock or three o'clock, depending on the session. And all of these sessions will be um, uploaded to our CSW Group YouTube channel um, once the, the programme is complete. So thank you once again to Karen. Uh, please leave feedback on this session if you're able to. And we hope to see you at our next session.